misery! The walls surround you! There is nowhere to run! Come then, I chill! I cannot die! Fortuna will not fail me! I am the best fighter who ever lived! Stay back! This thing will never take me! An auditorium will never best me! Roma, Italia, Hispania, they will all be mine! Take that! Mine. Wanting something does not make it your right. What do you know? That a true leader empowers the people he rules. I will lead mankind into a new world. Que nessuno ricordi il tuo nome. Requiescat in pace. You cannot kill me. No man can murder me! Then I leave you in the hands of fate. was mine! What do you know? I will lead mankind into a new world. You cannot kill me! No man can murder me!
For the weaknesses that Brotherhood had in trying to spin a new story out of an old one, by the end there was some hope to be found in Cesare Borgia. For most of the game it seemed like he was going to be the typical sandbox game villain with no development, no screen time, and no personality, besides showing up and being evil. But by the end, things had changed. Cesare lost his alliance with the French and all of his funding, and therefore most of his army, because most people aren't fueled solely by mere loyalty. He couldn't pay, so he was down to his best goons. Or his most ass-kissy goons. Whoever happened to be around, really, to indulge in his ridiculous promises of ruling the world. After Rodrigo cut his funding and Ezio cut up the banker, Cesare was literally distraught and he ended up murdering his father with a poison apple that he ate first and then got cured somehow. Because of magic. I think Cesare's a weird guy and seeing this character's complete overblown meltdown was the most charming part of the game because the voice actor plays well into the overdramatic position that Cesare found himself in. With another year of planning and Cesare appearances, the military genius is left with virtually zero resources since his loyal goons were murdered and the rest were scavenged from the corners of the earth with whatever Cesare had left to pay with him with out of pocket. This led Cesare to a last ditch effort to... I'm not really sure what he was playing at here, trying to burn down a nearby village to establish a base of operations and rebuild is my best guess. He might just be prejudiced against this area for all I know. Anyway, everything's burning, people I don't care about are dying, and Ezio is continuing to run as friend of the people platform and sprints his way through Cesare's war machines and soldiers to get to the man proper for a one-on-one -on -one dust up. Well, it would be one-on-one -on -one if Cesare wasn't so madly desperate to cling to a scrap of power. For Assassin's Creed Final Bosses, this one wasn't too shabby, but to be fair, that's comparing him to the likes of Rodrigo Borgia and Al Mualim, two old weirdos who could barely fist fight. The combat's basically the same as every other fight Ezio has had in his life, wait for counterattacks and mash buttons. It doesn't make the fight more fun when the minions start streaming in infinite amounts to help Cesare because they're dying left and right like Doritos at a frat party. The combat changes a little in this fight by being another verse, same as the first, back Cesare into a corner and spam the attack button because like Rodrigo, Cesare just has a ton of health in the fight for no reason. He can barely attack since Ezio is flailing his sword so fast and controlling the entire battle. Even when Ezio has to break off to deal with his minions, Cesare takes a grand 17 seconds of sweet time to even think about doing a damn thing and that ends up being the same attack as any other generic soldier can do. He has no signature moves of his own, and he's a complete joke in a fight. The fight is essentially pointless padding and button mashing, another generic AC knockdown drag out with no satisfaction other than ending the game with Cesare's death. The real redeeming factor is Cesare's ridiculous personality. He's overblown, completely unnecessarily angry, and filled with passion and delusions of grandeur. I was honestly laughing out of my chair by the end of the game, and Cesare's ultimate demise was that he was arrested by the government. It was the perfect way to end things, a total left field surprise. But if you want to know about the boss fight itself, it's boring, one note, dull, you could literally press skip on the entire final section of the game and miss nothing important.